Major League Baseball is just around the corner at Roger Dean Chevrolet Stadium. The Miami Marlins and St. Louis Cardinals are back at Jupiter for 2022. Come out and take in 30 games in 30 days and watch the teams as they face off against exciting opponents such as the New York Yankees, Boston Red Sox, Detroit Tigers, and more. Season tickets, mini plans, and group packages are available starting Tuesday, October 19th. To lock in your seats or to learn more, visit RogerDeanChevroletStadium.com or stop by the stadium ticket office. That's not an egg frying. It's the Martin County real estate market, which is sizzling hot. Values are high and so is demand. Properties draw competitive offers within minutes of going public. A national website won't help you navigate this market. You need a local expert. You need Martin County Realtors of the Treasure Coast. Our members know the neighborhood, the communities, the natural resources. They'll help you discover the hidden gems and work hard to get the best price possible. Visit findalocalrealtorexpert.com. Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrices. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. Hey, I'm Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and uh, keep in mind we have the Anytime Hotline up and running, so you can call right in to the studio, 561-291-8569, that's 561-291-8569, you can get me anytime on that number. During the show, it rings right here into the hotline, or right here into the studio, aka the Anytime Hotline, 561-291-8569, or as always... Find us on the web at mr.mortgage. Leave off the dot com. Just type in www.mr.mortgage. So, yeah, uh, Saturday morning here. We had another interesting week in the market. So the job list numbers were released yesterday. We had 467,000 new jobs created, which uh, blew past all expectations and the market reacted. Uh, we had a bump in the interest rate uh, market because of it. So, As the economy and COVID goes, so has interest rates of late. And as we seem to be moving through this Omicron variant with um, with less effect than anticipated, um, hence the the strong job numbers, we're seeing the interest rates try to stabilize and support this uh, this increased um, rate, if you will, that we're at. So. Rates still are um, are experiencing that up, upward pressure. They stabilized a bit early in the week. They bumped a little bit yesterday. So I would get used to this being the new norm. You know, rates are going to be where they are here for a while. And as we talked about last week, there's really nothing on the horizon to interrupt that. Um, Fed is doing their best to stabilize um, inflation and uh, the bond market is reacting. So Rates are where they are. Um, housing or the uh, the jobless claims certainly did nothing to interrupt that. And I just wanted to jump back to last week real quick. I wanted to clean up one segment that I left a little bit unanswered. Um, last week, I had mentioned that second home prices were going to increase. And I wanted to clarify that. I don't, I don't mean the homes themselves are going to increase, although they may <laughs> with the way things have been appreciating. But I was speaking specifically to the mortgage problem product used to buy a second home. So Fannie and Freddie announced that um, the second home mortgage product is going to have a pricing increase. And that takes effects on loans that are closed after March 14th. You're seeing it now in your lock rates, but loans that can get closed prior to uh, March 14th, you can forego that pricing increase, but it's going to be significant and it's going to affect the cost of the mortgage for the second home. So I encourage anyone who has questions on that to give us a call. 561-291-8569 is the anytime hotline or Mr. Dot Mortgage is the website. There's a contact us link there. So, um, and also too, during the week or even during the show, but during the week, if you have questions that you want addressed and you're not comfortable getting, uh, hearing your voice on the air, just shoot us a text or give us a call to that number. We'll be happy to incorporate your questions. Um, We're going to cover a lot of topics this week. We're going to touch on things like the necessity to have a really good real estate agent on your team right now, especially on the buyer side, um, to craft the offer. We talked a lot last week about waiving waiving appraisals, and uh, we're going to talk this week about waiving the home inspection. Um, But having an agent on your side that can craft the offer to incorporate these strategies is super important. 
And if you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you need one, we're happy to refer you to somebody. I have the benefit of working with a ton of agents. I've seen some really good ones. I've seen some really bad ones. I've seen a lot of me- mediocre agents, but I'm happy to guide you to somebody um, that will definitely take your, your best interest to heart. So we're going to cover that. We're going to look at things like reverse mortgages, and that may be an opportunity in this market. We've experienced a lot of appreciation. People have a ton of equity. Rates are still super low. So to hedge inflation, it might make sense to uh, increase your monthly income with a refer- reverse mortgage, because uh, as we know, Social Security increases aren't outpacing inflation. And when you're on a fixed income, but you're sitting on a bounty of equity, you know, cashing out and refinancing might not make sense. Selling and buying into this market might not make sense but capitalizing on a uh, reverse mortgage may make sense. So we're not going to go deep into that. That's a whole show on its own, but I'm going to cover a little bit of it. Yeah, we're going to talk about uh, that. We're going to cover a few other points. We're going to take your questions. Um, if you have them, text them in to 291-8569, or if you want to jump on the air with us, call us at 561 291 Eight five six nine. So we're also going to touch on the uh, the appreciation that's forecasted to uh, c- continue to grow. Uh, there were some reports this week that were just amazing. Um, U.S. housing market gained almost ten trillion dollars in value. Now that's the market as a whole. Some areas are certainly appreciating faster than other others, but the uh, the U.S. housing market gained ten trillion with a T dollars during the pandemic. So there's a ton of you know, really uh, not, there's a ton of recently realized, and that was tough to say, recently realized appreciation. So people are sitting on a lot of equity wealth that they didn't have as recently as two years ago. And um, we're going to cover that. We're going to go into how to find opportunity in this market. Oftentimes we get frustrated by things. We feel we're getting priced out of the market. Certainly the first time home buyer is feeling the pinch. But if you are in a stable situation, you've got some equity, you're looking at other opportunities, maybe it makes sense to buy an investment property. There's a lot of new loan products that are available to capitalize on um, investment property. So we're going to cover the DSCR loan. That's a loan product that allows you to use the income uh, from the property exclusively to qualify you for the uh, necessary income to buy the property. So a DSCR loan is a great tool to use in this environment. And if you're able to, um, I know there's a lot of interest in becoming landlords of late. Um, Second homes and investment properties jumped 85% year over year at the end of last year. So uh, people are looking to that to uh, provide additional income as well as capitalizing on future appreciation in, in real estate. And we're also going to cover some self-employed borrower loans, um, typically called a non-QM product. And we're not going to go into um, too, too, mu- too many details on the non-QM space, but I just want to make people aware that as it's tax time, there's heightened awareness of how valuable a, a really good CPA or accountant is in writing off a ton of our income so we minimize our tax exposure. But in doing that, when a guy like me says, hey, you want to buy a piece of property? Let me see your tax returns. Oftentimes, we're left with not um, necessarily your full income uh, to qualify you because we're using the income on your tax returns. And I know there's a lot of um, ad, ad back, so we can take some of the write-offs that your CPA or accountant utilized and write them back in and count them as income. But oftentimes, with, especially with um, with some very aggressive CPAs, we see people that aren't able to qualify. Uh, they may be able to pay for the loan, but they may not qualify for it on on paper. In those instances, we have some alternative income verification loans. We can utilize bank statements to, to qualify you. So we'll cover some of the non-QM products that are designed for uh, self-employed borrowers and try to find some of the opportunity that exists in the market today. Um, we're still s- forecast to see some record uh, appreciation moving into at least the first quarter of 2022. And then I think we're going to stabilize as, as we talked about last week into a, you know, six to 9% appreciation rate, which still um, gives us great uh, equity wealth over a period of time. So stick with us. We're going to cover all those topics and answer your questions here on this show. Um, Give us a call at 561-291-8569 or visit the website, www.mr.mortgage. You can always submit your questions. 
Uh, We'll be right back to cover those topics and answer your questions right after this break. Thanks. Quick question. Do you have any idea what your home is actually worth in this market? I mean, things have been appreciating so quickly. I know a lot of people turn to the internet and those online estimates, um, but I wanted to share with you a powerful tool that we use every day in our lending practice. We have a valuation tool that generates a robust 10 to 15 page detailed property valuation report. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate and detailed than one of those online estimates. And I'd like to make that available to you, one of our valued listeners. Just visit the website freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. There, you'll be prompted to answer a few questions about your property. That's it. We'll do the rest. We're happy to send you the report. Just visit freevaluereport.org. O-R-G. And thank you for being a listener of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are you a rock star real estate agent? I mean, truly one of the best. If you are, let's talk. This is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we are currently expanding our network of rock star referral partners. If you think you have what it takes, we'd love to connect. Just visit Mr.Mortgage. That's www.mr.mortgage. Dot mortgage. There's no dot com. Just type in Mr. Dot mortgage. Hit the contact us button and let's talk. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, so we are back. Again, my name is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and you can call us at 561-291-8569. That's the anytime hotline, but during the show, it rings right here at the studio. So give us a shout, 561 561- Two nine one eight five six nine, or as always, visit the website www.mr.mortgage. Again, there is never, ever, ever a dot com after mortgage. Just Mr. Dot Mortgage, and uh, you'll you'll find the website there. So, uh, we alluded in the first segment to some opportunities in the market, and I wanted to talk about the um, the DSCR loan because while it's not a new product, it's it's got some fairly new guidelines to it. So DSCR simply means debt service coverage ratio. So when you're buying an investment property, traditionally the investor or the uh, lender rather is looking at the cash flow that the property generates as income to satisfy the, the loan, the loan payment. So I like to to always tell my stories in very round numbers. So while these probably aren't actual rental rates of today's market, it's easier to tell the story. So just bear with me. If you're buying a rental property and the loan payment, including the principal, the interests, the taxes, the insurance, um, if there's any homeowners association fees associated with that, you want all those lumped into one payment, uh, one amount rather, to that if that payment is $1,000, Typically, the rent would have to be $1,250 for that to be considered cash flow even from the lender standpoint. And the reason they had done that was they want to make sure that you have um, enough capital in or enough cash flow in the property to offset vacancies and uh, repairs as necessary. Well, the new DSCR loan products allow that to be a one to one ratio. So if you bought a property, that had a thousand dollar monthly payment associated with it and one thousand dollars a month in rent that's considered cash flow even from the lender standpoint and they'll fund against that transaction now 
there is a credit score requirement and there is a down payment requirement, but it broadens the availability for investors to take advantage of the market that we're in. And the market that we're in is experiencing historic rent increases as well as appreciation. And in some markets, rent increases are outpacing Um, appreciation, which is really driving the first time buyer crazy because they would prefer to own, stabilize that payment and not uh, be subject to rental increases each year. However, as we mentioned in the first segment, finding opportunity in this market for somebody who wants to invest, it's, it's an opportune time to jump in and be a landlord because you've got you know, great rent rates supporting your investment. Now that doesn't mean to run out there recklessly and buy property, but just know that there's a, a um, these debt service coverage ratio products available to you. So if you're retired and you don't have significant income on paper and you want to invest in properties, this may, might be a tool that you can utilize to jump in and become a landlord, use a DSCR loan with a one-to-one minimum, minimum ratio and you're now with as little as a 15 to 25% down payment, you're able to jump in and, um, and buy some investment property. So I wanted, I wanted to touch on that. That's, that's a, 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 I wanted to touch on that. That's a loan program that's often misunderstood and it's, it's fairly new in the, in the, um, in the guideline changes. So it can be utilized for a lot of investment properties also in the residential space primarily, but Airbnb rentals, you can buy an Airbnb rental with a DSCR loan. And while that's a relatively new space, I know Airbnb has been around for a few years. It's really taking hold as an investment uh, strategy where people are buying properties specifically to short-term rental or they're buying properties specifically to Airbnb. The short-term rental market is really um, gaining steam. But I do want to caution you that if you are looking to jump into the Airbnb game, if you will, definitely look at the local ordinances as well as the association guidelines, because there are some uh, communities pushing back against that. And I think most people's fear is that if the neighbor's uh, home hits the Airbnb market, suddenly, you know, every weekend, it's going to seem like a scene from the movie Animal House. But um, there's a lot of people who do very well in that space. Um, and I, I can understand not wanting the animal house, uh, scene played out in your front lawn every, every Saturday. But I also know too, that there's, there's a lot of, uh, families or there are rather a lot of families and, uh, people who just Airbnb for a week or a month at a time. Um, I know there's a big market for that short-term rental for traveling nurses. So, It's not always a scary thing, but so just jump in, check the local ordinances, get with an experienced real estate agent who's worked that market before, because they'll often be able to guide you through the transaction. And again, if you don't have an agent and you want a rock star, we'll do our best to find you one. We're happy to refer you to somebody, but yeah, so DSCR loans can be used for a variety of uh, investments, investment real estate strategies. So just wanted to touch on that. We get a lot of questions. We're seeing more and more of them. And the biggest thing to remember is the the coverage ratio of one to one is fundable. So the property doesn't have to throw out a ton of positive cash for it to make sense from the lender standpoint. And honestly, it gives you an opportunity to jump in there and maybe you maybe you found a property that is under market rent. And with some um, renovations or some improvements to the property, you can increase the, the, the rents and in turn increase the property value, but then be, be in a positive cash position. So in the past, if you were buying a property that didn't cash flow, say one uh, to 1.25, then you were look, the, the lender was looking to your personal income to offset the, um, the payment. In this instance, a one-to-one ratio gives you a broader ability to go out there and find, um, find properties that do cash flow. So if you have any questions about the DSCR loan products, give us a call 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. Or visit us on the website, www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage. So I'm just looking through the text line now. I see a question that came in. We have a question that says, interest rates have gone up. I still want to refi and pull cash out, but I don't know that it makes sense. 
where do you think interest rates are going? Well, I don't have a crystal ball for the interest rate um, where they're going. I do think that we're in this elevated market. So if you missed the, um, the opportunity to refinance and lower your rate and lower your payment or maybe shorten your term, um, what, what, what's classed as a typical um, rate and term refinance, you might have you might have missed the boat. However, if you need to refinance for other reasons to pay off higher debt, higher um, interest rate debt, credit cards, car payments, boat payment, whatever it may be, or some unforeseen expenses, um, now is still an amazing time to do it. You certainly have never had more equity in your property, and interest rates are historically low. So by comparison to credit card rates or, um, or vehicle rates or recreational vehicle rates. I mean, I see people pay off their RV. I know a lot of people in the p- pandemic ran out and bought uh, fifth wheels and RVs. And now they've got, you know, a 20 year loan on an RV. And they, they had this very cool idea that they were going to travel the country and, and sell the house and, you know, live off the land and off the grid, I guess is, is the, um, is the common phrase, but perhaps that didn't happen. And now there's a big RV sitting alongside the house or worse yet in a storage lot that you're paying rent on the, the, the storage and the RV payment. So in those instances, you know, refinancing to pay off that kind of stuff certainly makes sense. You're going to want to look at your total monthly outflow, including the debt you pay off and compare that against your new um, mortgage payment. But I'll, I'll dive in just a little deeper on that on the other side of this break. Um, we're going to be right back in a, in a few moments. And keep in mind, you can call us or text your questions in to 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. That is the Anytime Hotline. It rings here in the studio during the show or forward forwards to my office during the week. We'll be right back. Quick question. Do you have any idea what your home is actually worth in this market? I mean, things have been appreciating so quickly. I know a lot of people turn to the internet and those online estimates, um, but I wanted to share with you a powerful tool that we use every day in our lending practice. We have a valuation tool that generates a robust 10 to 15 page detailed property valuation report. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate and detailed than one of those online estimates. And I'd like to make that available to you, one of our valued listeners. Just visit the website freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. There, you'll be prompted to answer a few questions about your property. That's it. We'll do the rest. We're happy to send you the report. Just visit freevaluereport.org. O-R-G. And thank you for being a listener of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are you a rock star real estate agent? I mean, truly one of the best. If you are, let's talk. This is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we are currently expanding our network of rock star referral partners. If you think you have what it takes, we'd love to connect. Just visit Mr.Mortgage. That's www.mr.mortgage. Dot mortgage. There's no dot com. Just type in Mr. Dot mortgage. Hit the contact us button and let's talk. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, and we are back. I'm Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And as always, you can call the Anytime Hotline, which is 561-291-8569. That's 291-8569. Or visit the website, www.mr dot mortgage no dot com just mr dot mortgage so hey to finish the thought up on that refinance so 
if you're going to pay off some higher interest rate debt, it certainly still makes sense. And I wanted to share a very quick story. And um, I, I, I like to share stories because I think they're relatable. So I helped a young family, super, super nice people. They had purchased their home. I want to say, and I'm doing this from memory, so just bear with me, but this is this happened just in the last uh, month or so. They, they owned their home for about five or six years. They were first-time buyers when they bought the home. They had a um, a ton of equity. And during the pandemic, they were, you know, like the rest of us, they were um, sequestered to their homes. And I think actually, if I remember correctly, the mom lost her job and, and lost the, the health insurance with that. But anyway, one of the children um, was injured and uh, they had some some medical expenses that they paid with their credit cards. And they're super frugal and super smart. And they opened a Discover card with a 0% interest rate for whatever um, grace period that was given. And they spread the balances over the course of a few uh, different credit cards that they could get that introductory rate on. And um, they they managed to, uh, to pay the medical bills for their child. And they were stuck with the payments when they started to adjust. Now, these people did what they had to do, which um, oftentimes we, we were all faced with that, and they pulled it off, right? So the COVID restrictions ease, and um, dad goes to back to work full time, and everything is stabilized, and those credit card payments adjust and start coming due. So to make a very, very long story short, we did a, um, a debt consolidation loan. And it's a product that we have, and I'm sure other lenders have it, um, but it's called a REC, R-E-C, refinance. And it's reduce, eliminate, and consolidate is what REC stands for. And there's certain requirements that we're, if we're able to meet them um, with this loan, we have um, some, there's some benefits associated with it. So in this instance, we use the REC refinance and they paid off the, all the credit cards, which were essentially were the medical expenses, but they paid off all the credit cards and they took a little bit of cash out just to do some catch up renovation around the home. I guess we, we probably all noticed a lot of things during the pandemic when we were stuck inside that we wanted to change about our homes. But in this instance, they had a little wish list, so they paid off all the credit cards and, um, and had some money left over to, to do the uh, renovations uh, around the house. But where I'm going with this story is the the actual mortgage payment itself. We w- they uh, owning the home for five or six years. They did have a slightly higher interest rate than we were able to get them. We lowered the rate a little bit, not a lot. That that savings wasn't that significant, you know, mortgage to mortgage, if you will. But where they saw an amazing savings was all the credit cards that we paid off and the and the slight reduction in the mortgage payment saved them about $800 a month. So for this family of four, that made a significant impact on their, on their lives and having that home allowed them to, to do that. So yes, there are still instances where it makes sense to refinance and we're still talking about amazing interest rates. I mean, granted, you don't get the cocktail party, um, uh, award, for the lowest interest rate at the party. So you, there's always that guy at the, at the barbecue or at your friend's um, dinner party who's standing in the corner letting everybody know that he got the 2% 30-year fixed rate with no points. And great, he wins the, uh, the neighborhood award for the all-time lowest rate ever or what, whatever those numbers work out to be. We all, we all know that guy. And some of us are that guy, which is, hey, awesome if you got lucky and scored the bottom. But... Um, the reality is that there are always circumstances where um, cashing some of the equity out to offset other expenses makes sense. Um, granted, for the last couple of years, the majority of people capitalized on rate and term refis, which you know you're lowering your payment or shortening your term, certainly reducing your interest rate. Um, but the rec loan still makes sense for a lot of people. If you have questions about that particular loan product. Just give me a shout, 561-291-8569. But um, yeah, I, I really loved how that um, how that played out. Um, super, super nice people. And it made sense for them in that instance to um, to save $800 a month. And um, they utilize their house to do that. So, And that's another thing I want to encourage a lo- all of us to do. So 
most of us own our homes. A lot of us may have capitalized on the rates of late and say, hey, Mark, hey, cool, you've got a mortgage show, but I don't need a mortgage. That may be true for you, but I encourage everybody to guide the younger generation, the people around us to, if they're able to make a rent payment, they're, they may be able to make a mortgage payment. And the best way to start generational wealth or equity wealth rather is by real estate ownership. And most of us have seen that in our own lives over the the course of the last couple of years. So I encourage you to share that with the young people around you. If If it's your children or your grandchildren or your nieces or your nephews, encourage them to look into to buying their first home because there's nothing easier than coming home every month and making that payment. And over the course of you know, a few years you have built up equity. And we, we talked about it last week and I got a little ribbing some from some uh, friends of mine who I referenced equity being either appreciation or principal um, reduction and appreciation being the pretty one and uh, principal reduction being the ugly one, but them both being equity. And this is an example where um, regardless of the route, it it worked out for this, uh, this family. So I encourage everybody just to, you know, to share that story with people and let them know that buying that first home, um, even if it's not the home you want, you know, we all, we all have our wish list. You know, I don't want to buy a home. We, I hear this all the time. I don't want to buy a home until I can get this. And it, we, Dom and I talked about this and this is, and I know I shared this last week too, but this is an interesting dilemma that we're in. We have, um, we have people who say, I don't want to do until, And they have this long wish list, you know, five bedrooms and a pool and great. And I want you to have that. But maybe the two bedroom townhouse is the starting point. And that's the jumping off point. And you live there for a few years and build that equity. That'll help you take that next step. Or God forbid you run into a situation where you need that equity to pay medical bills or to bridge a gap in other areas in your life. So home ownership, real estate still makes a lot of sense for a lot of people. I'll always be an advocate of it in all markets. So yes, refinancing, even in an increasing interest rate environment can make sense to you. Don't um, just look at the headlines, dig into your monthly inflow and monthly outflow and analyze your your particular situation. So I didn't mean for that to go as long as it did. I thought I was just going to clean up that previous segment, but I just wanted to share with you that one story because we oftentimes say, okay, I missed the boat and we kick ourselves. Um, but the reality is, um, I don't know who said, I'm sure it's an ancient Chinese proverb or Buddha or somebody said, if you want shade, the best time to have planted a tree was a hundred years ago. Well, the second best time is right now. So yeah, you missed that all time low interest rate, but you still have opportunity in front of you. And Hey, maybe that's why I told that story. Maybe this all winds back to that opening segment where we talk about capitalizing on opportunity in the market. So a uh, long answer to a question. Yes, it still makes sense um, if it makes sense to you. So uh, if you have questions, give us a call. 561-291-8569 is the anytime hotline or visit www.mr.mortgage. Again, 561-291-8569. So we're going to take a short break here. And when we get back, I'm going to cover those other topics that we mentioned. We, we touched briefly on the DSCR loan. We're going to talk a little bit about reverse mortgages. Um, I've got a reverse mortgage client that I'm going to see today after the show. So that's top of mind for me. So we will be right back after these messages. Thanks. Quick question. Do you have any idea what your home is actually worth in this market? I mean, things have been appreciating so quickly. I know a lot of people turn to the internet and those online estimates, um, but I wanted to share with you a powerful tool that we use every day in our lending practice. We have a valuation tool that generates a robust 10 to 15 page detailed property valuation report. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate and detailed than one of those online estimates. And I'd like to make that available to you, one of our valued listeners. Just visit the website freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. There, you'll be prompted to answer a few questions about your property. That's it. We'll do the rest. We're happy to send you the report. Just visit freevaluereport.org. 
And thank you for being a listener of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are you a rock star real estate agent? I mean, truly one of the best. If you are, let's talk. This is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we are currently expanding our network of rock star referral partners. If you think you have what it takes, we'd love to connect. Just visit Mr. Mortgage. That's www.mr.mortgage. There's no .com. Just type in Mr. Mortgage. Hit the contact us button and let's talk. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. All right, we are back. Again, my name is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and the Anytime Hotline phone number is 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. Or you can hit the Contact Us link at www.mr.mortgage, no.com, just mr.mortgage. So I wanted to hit back on one of the topics in the opening segment where we talked about the, the alternative forms of income verification for self-employed borrowers. So as we mentioned, it's tax time and we're all looking at our tax returns or we're soon to be looking at them. And we do our best to reduce our financial uh, obligations to the old IRS in the form of taxes. So in doing that, we often end up with a income amount that may not fully represent our buying power. And when a mortgage professional is jumping in and evaluating your tax returns, you may say, Hey, wait a minute. I, I make a lot more than that. Um, and, and we are able to add back, as I mentioned, some write-offs to, um, to, to, to more truly, to more truly represent your income. But there's a very um, interesting loan program that's available where we're able to use the income that's flowing through your bank statements um, to verify your qualifying income. Now, I I caution you this, that it's not a dollar for dollar uh, um, uh, qualifying. So if you have $20,000 a month um, flowing through your your, your business bank account or your, or your personal bank account, depending on your profession, that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to use $20,000 a month for your qualifying uh, income. But what it does mean is, well, and think about that for a minute. If you're a general contractor or a handyman or whatever the case may be, and you're providing a service that requires you to buy materials or you're a manufacturer even, and you're buying raw goods to, pr- to produce a product, certainly you know, logic dictates that that $20,000 isn't all kept as income because you've got material expenses against that. You've got obligations against that income. So there's different calculations for different professions. If you're a consultant and you're working from your home and you're, um, you're getting paid for your advice, then the majority of that 20,000 might truly be income. But we're going to lean on your CPA or your accountant to give us some guidance on, you know, what a reasonable ratio is for your profession. But that opens up a wide variety of um, purchasing power for most self-employed people. So I've got a client right now, super, super nice guy. He owns five businesses and he's one of the more complex tax filings that, that we've seen. And I've got on staff some people that are, they're specialists in in diagnosing tax returns for self-employed borrowers. So we've got an amazing team when it comes to um, this segment of the market. The complicated nature of the five businesses and how everything flows through one business to another, and this one shows a loss, and this one has a small gain and another loss here. I totally understand the purpose of that strategy um, because he's minimizing his, all within the law, by the way, but he's minimizing his tax exposure. However, his, his actual qualifying purchase amount, or in this case, a refinance, is ridiculously low by comparison of what his actual earning um, power is, if you will. So we utilized a, um, 
a bank statement loan to do a cash out refi- refinance for them. So yes, you can do a cash out refinance. You can, you can do a rate and term refinance. Um, so you can do a purchase. So a bank statement loan or another alternative income verification loan product um, is a great tool for the self-employed borrower. Sometimes we can get away with as little as 12 months bank bank statements. Some of them require a 24 month chain of bank statements. Sometimes we can use one tax return uh, instead of two years tax returns. There's just, there's a wide variety of circumstances where having a lender on your team, be it, be it my team, me or, or another lender, but have somebody on your team that, that utilizes all these products and has knowledge in all of these areas because in our um, our region, if you will, in South Florida, we have a tremendous number of self-employed people. And it's just a shame when, you know, you might be an amazing banking customer, and I'm not going to mention any of the big box banks, but you might have an amazing relationship with your bank and you're self-employed and you've been You've been a loyal customer and you've got great credit, but you're, you're a self-employed person who shows very little income on their tax returns. And you go to make a purchase and walk into your bank and think that you're in great shape and the banks, I'm sorry, we can't do this. And a lot of banking institutions don't have, and they may, I may be wrong, definitely ask them, but most banking institutions don't offer these alternative products that are often classed as non-QM. So bank statement loans for self-employed borrowers, um, certainly explore the option. Don't let your tax returns count you out of, of this market. And again, that speaks back to the, um, the topic of finding opportunity in this market. So even if a loan program that might be slightly out of the box carries a little higher interest rate, look at the overall picture. Does that monthly payment still make sense? Does gaining the appreciation in the property still make sense? Or as I mentioned last week, some let's say property never appreciates again. Does just owning that home and paying down that principal over time make sense? If, if the answer to those are yes, then, then you certainly want to explore all your options when um, considering making a purchase. So just because the bank says two years tax returns are required, and I'm not knocking the bank, right? Everybody's got a different, a different set of rules and, and, and all institutions have different products. So I'm not knocking anybody, but don't let that very first no um, be the only no you hear because explore your options, you know, ask, do you have a suite of non QM products? Do you offer bank statement loans? Um, an, another big, big market that we serve here in our region is foreign nationals. Um, you're, you're a foreign national or you're here on an H one work visa and you're going through the citizenship process the right way. You didn't climb a fence. You're here. You're documented. You're going through the uh, the the process of becoming a citizen. There's visa classes. There's the foreign national class that that offers um, the opportunity to buy real estate. So I think that with the tremendous opportunity that's available in the market, and by opportunity I mean two things, right? Interest rates are low, so relative to the amount of money we're borrowing, payments are low. But also the foreseeable appreciation is another opportunity. So finding that opportunity and then exploring all the options that allow you to capitalize it on it, I think are super important. And for self-employed borrowers, that, that's the suite of uh, bank statement products that are available. For foreign nationals, it's the non-QM um, products that are available. And to jump all the way back to the investor, self-employed investors can use a DSCR loan to buy you know, uh, uh, cash flowing investment properties. And we see a ton of that, by the way, there's the, in the construction industry in particular, the self-employed, um, construction company owner or remodeler or handyman, that's the perfect guy to go out there and use the DSCR loan to buy investment property. Because if it needs renovation, guess who's doing that renovation and they're not paying retail, they're doing it at their cost and they're maximizing their return on that um, effort and investment. So non-QM products, um, that's a technical term, but basically it's just alternative products, uh, mortgage products that are available to you. We covered a couple of the uh, those today. We covered the DSCR loan, which is uh, primarily designed for investment properties, including Airbnb properties. 
and we covered the um, bank statement loan for self-employed uh, borrowers. So we are uh, w- we're happy to answer any questions on both of those those loan products. We have a full suite of non-QM products available. So if you have questions, give us a call at 561-291-8569. That's 561-291-8569. I might have thrown an extra digit in there. Let me do that again. 561-291-8569 is the anytime hotline for the Mr. Mortgage Show. Rings live in the studio during the show or forwards to my office during the week. And as always... Visit us at www.mr.mortgage. Thanks. Quick question. Do you have any idea what your home is actually worth in this market? I mean, things have been appreciating so quickly. I know a lot of people turn to the internet and those online estimates, um, but I wanted to share with you a powerful tool that we use every day in our lending practice. We have a valuation tool that generates a robust 10 to 15 page detailed property valuation report. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate and detailed than one of those online estimates. And I'd like to make that available to you, one of our valued listeners. Just visit the website freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. There, you'll be prompted to answer a few questions about your property. That's it. We'll do the rest. We're happy to send you the report. Just visit freevaluereport.org. And thank you for being a listener of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are you a rock star real estate agent? I mean, truly one of the best. If you are, let's talk. This is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we are currently expanding our network of rock star referral partners. If you think you have what it takes, we'd love to connect. Just visit Mr.Mortgage. That's www.mr.mortgage. There's no .com. Just type in Mr.Mortgage. Hit the contact us button and let's talk. It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now, 561-291-8569. Hey, I'm Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show, and uh, welcome back. So we talked about a lot of stuff this week so far, and I think I referenced in the first segment the, um, the reverse mortgages. So as I'm seeing a reverse mortgage client today, that's top of mind for me. So I want to just answer the the two most common questions, and I'm not going to spend much time on it today. Happy to answer any questions if you if you have them. Five six one two nine one eight five six nine. Um, it's a product that we offer and a product that I believe in. But the two questions I get more times than not are, what happens to the house when I die, and it's left to the estate? So, um, it's. R- it's not much different than if you die and you have a mortgage. So the estate in the case of a a reverse mortgage has up to 12 months to settle, settle the estate and satisfy the outstanding mortgage. And they can do it in the form of one of the heirs can refinance the house into their name, or if they sell the house, they just take the equity into the estate like any other, um, any other circumstance that uh, someone passes away, leaves a property to the uh, heirs that has a mortgage on it. The second question I get a lot, which is interesting, is what happens to the estate if I die and I owe more than the property's worth? And we saw that in the crash, um, you know, 10, 15 years ago, where people had um, the the, the properties depreciated and they had actually owed more on the property um, than it was worth. Here's the amazing thing about this product. Your heirs give the keys back to the bank. They have no obligation to pay that difference. This product is, it's non, it's non recourse in that, in that circumstance. And there's an insurance policy against the, the loan. So the lender um, is insured that it performs. So 
if you owe 200 and it's only worth 100 and it sells for 100 the bank is made whole by the by fha and um yeah your your heirs are not responsible for that difference so very cool aspect to the product that very few people know about so lastly i just wanted to touch on one thing that i mentioned the importance of having an amazing real estate agent and i'm going to dive into more of this next week but i wanted to throw this out at you um, I see a lot of buyers waving everything. I mean, it looks like they're the, the, the queen of the parade, you know, both hands are waving out each side of the car. Um, it's crazy. We're waving appraisals, we're waving inspections. And we talked about appraisals last week, but I saw some interesting language crafted by an amazing real estate agent this week. So waving the home inspection and waving the home inspection contingency are two very, very different things. I strongly suggest people do not waive a home inspection. You don't want to buy a home and have no idea what the physical characteristics of that property are. What year is the, I mean, it's just crazy to me. You don't buy a car without a Carfax. I mean, hopefully you get, you get a warranty on it and you might get offered, you know, 10 times a month to extend that warranty, but don't buy a property without a home inspection. What you can do is tell the seller, listen, I'm not going to come back to you and ask for anything to be fixed or paid for under an amount of whatever that number is to you. $500 was the language that I saw. So the seller was hesitant to take the offer. The buyer's agent, which this guy's an amazing agent, well-crafted offer. He said, listen, Mr. Seller, I understand your hesitancy. However, my buyer would be foolish not to have the home inspected. So what we agree to do is allow us the home inspection, but we are not going to come back to you and renegotiate the price, nor are we going to ask you to pay for repairs, any single repair under $500. And then he had a, um, a total repair value in this instance of 5,000. And I don't know what your comfort level is for that big number, but do not waive your home inspection. Um, try to craft your offer so that the seller is comfortable that you're not going to use that against them in negotiation, but give yourself the right to inspect the property and also give yourself the right to walk away from the contract. If, if it's a dump, you know, if the inspector finds all kinds of problems and you've already agreed that you don't want to negotiate the, the price, walk away from the contract, but definitely you need a rock star agent on your team more so than ever and i'm happy to guide you to somebody if you don't have somebody if you already have them fantastic share with them that tip if they have any questions they can call me at 561-291-8569 that's the anytime hotline or visit www.mrmortgage 561-291-8569 or mr.mortgage thank you That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Quick question. Do you have any idea what your home is actually worth in this market? I mean, things have been appreciating so quickly. I know a lot of people turn to the internet and those online estimates. Um, But I wanted to share with you a powerful tool that we use every day in our lending practice. We have a valuation tool that generates a robust 10 to 15 page detailed property valuation report. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate and detailed than one of those online estimates. And I'd like to make that available to you, one of our valued listeners. Just visit the website freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. There, you'll be prompted to answer a few questions about your property. That's it. We'll do the rest. We're happy to send you the report. Just visit freevaluereport.org. And thank you for being a listener of the Mr. Mortgage Show. Are you a rock star real estate agent? I mean, truly one of the best. If you are, let's talk. This is Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And we are currently expanding our network of rock star referral partners. If you think you have what it takes, we'd love to connect. Just visit mr.mortgage. That's www.mr.mortgage. There's no .com. Just type in mr.mortgage. Hit the contact us button and let's talk.
It's not every day that you need an appraisal, whether it's for a divorce settlement, estate planning, or maybe you're appealing a tax assessment, or you just want to make sure you have adequate coverage in your property insurance. When you need a certified appraisal, turn to my friends at soflappraisal.com. That's soflappraisal.com. Peter and his team have been appraising properties here in South Florida for decades. soflappraisal.com. And tell him you heard this on the Mr. Mortgage Show. Whenever you look for news, you may feel forced to choose between partisans in mainstream media and conspiracists in alternative media. That's where the lost debate steps in. I'm Corey Bradford a progressive political organizer turned TikTok star who also once hosted a Fox News radio show. I'm Ricky Schlatt, a Gen Z New York Post columnist and libertarian fighting to protect free speech. And I'm Ravi Gupta, a former staffer for Obama and school principal who also fought alongside Republicans on charter schools. And we launched The Lost Debate, a podcast and YouTube show for the political eclectics who've lost trust in a polarizing partisan world, but who also reject the disinformation and manipulation in alternative media. Instead of being at each other's throats, we focus on bringing new perspectives to the table in constructive debate that sounds less like crossfire and more like discussions between real people. Check out The Lost Debate on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Geico asks, how would you love a chance to save some money on insurance? Of course you would. And when it comes to great rates on insurance, Geico can help. Like with insurance for your car, truck, motorcycle, boat, and RV. Even help with homeowners or renters coverage. Plus, add an easy-to-use mobile app, available 24-hour roadside assistance and more, and Geico is an easy choice. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. It's easy. Simply go to geico.com or contact your local agent today.